Can you feel it, Timmy? Or I don't think so. Not, not yet. How much recreational ketamine would you have to do to achieve a similar effect that Timmy will be feeling in the few minutes? I wouldn't compare it to any other views. I would discourage completely. Of course. My first beer was probably like 15 or something. No, way before that, way before that. It's probably like 13. I'm not an alcoholic. It's not like I drink every day, but I think that it could go that way pretty easily. You know, I'm often buying like three bottles of wine for a tenner from the corner shop or bags of tinnies. It's just stupid, like, it just retards people, literally. Like, you go out and people just make fools out of themselves and do horrible things and say horrible things to the people they love. You know, I, I'm pretty well educated on, like, different drug use, and my informed decision is that I want to cut this out. So heading up to Canterbury, as you can see, to meet up with Timmy Davis, who is a 24-year-old student who thinks he has a bit of a drinking problem. Uh, he's taking part in a study in which a doctor will be pumping ketamine into his veins and kind of messing with his memory a bit to try and make the relationship between him and alcohol a bit less of a pleasant one. I personally wouldn't do it. I mean, if I had to get off the booze, I would pick something that doesn't involve horse tranquilizers, if I'm honest. But you know, this is the point of the study, because if it turns out that this is the best way to go about it, I mean, this could save lives. Hey, man. Hey, man. Joe, nice hey, to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Come on through. Thank you. This kind of is like the archetypal student bedroom. So there's more books than you could ever read in a lifetime. You know, there's old records, but there's also booze paraphernalia. How much do you drink? It's a mix between beer and wine. It's probably like, if I go out, I'll have five or six drinks, probably more. Yeah, and that's probably like three or four times a week. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of quite clear psychedelic influence. Are you banging to psychedelics and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's been a big part of my life for ages, actually. So I've always been drinking, and then psychedelics came into my life and played a big part as well, and the drinking's just never left. So you said that you, you feel comfortable dabbling in things like LSD and mescaline and all these other things that, on a general scale, society would probably frown upon, but you think that alcohol is the most harmful one? Yeah, definitely. I, I don't want to cut it out completely. Like, I, I hate prohibiting myself from anything, really. I just don't think it's healthy. As someone who probably drinks more than I'm supposed to, I get why Timmy wanted to cut down, but I wasn't sure a massive bang of ketamine was the right way to go about it. Was there only, like, one event at which you thought, this is now an issue? I don't think so. You know, I wasn't searching out methods to cut down before I saw the study. I'm contributing to medical science and the psychedelic renaissance, you know. I realised that Timmy wasn't just doing this to get wavy in a hospital. This was research that could change the way we treat addiction forever. I asked lead researcher Ravi Das to explain how it works. So we know that memory is really important in addiction. Your brain's really uh, well adapted to learning about rewards. Addictive drugs like alcohol uh, activate the reward centers in your brain. When you encounter something in the environment, like the sight of a pint of beer, it can trigger those rewarding uh, memories and then motivate people to go and drink more. My current research is uh, looking to see whether we can weaken those memories with ketamine. Timmy doesn't need to quit alcohol forever. The researchers will consider the experiment a success if he changes his habits and reduces his drinking. So we'll be fitting one of these caps onto your head and then we'll be putting gel into each one of these little electrodes. Here. The first step is a scan to see what his brain looks like when he's thinking about booze. Pleasant. Three. Uh, how pleasant does that look? Probably four. Four? Okay, and then looking at the beer in front of you, uh, how pleasant does that look? Four. So, you just follow the instructions. Prepare to drink. Okay, so that's the end of this task. 
So we do have a bathroom where you're welcome to go wash your hair. I mean, they said in there that the, that the dosage of the ketamine is going to be quite high. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's going to be the most amount of ketamine you've ever had? I kind of want to be like, oh, you know, I'm no stranger to it. I should be all right. But <laughs> it, it sounds like it's going to be pretty intense. So in the simplest terms, how does ketamine work to kind of alter people's memories? So you could think of the procedure as kind of uh, a file on a computer. So imagine you've got a document saved on your computer and that's one of your memories. You can open up the file and edit it. Then if instead of resaving it, which is what would normally happen, uh, you kind of pull the plug on the computer, um, which is kind of what we're, we're doing with the ketamine. We're stopping the memory resaving, if you like. You could potentially weaken those memories. Three days later, we met at the hospital. I didn't mind Timmy forgetting the alcohol, but I didn't want him to forget me, as it would have made the rest of our interactions quite awkward. Have you ever tried to do any sort of tasks on Ket or any other drugs before, like any like a crossword or something, maybe? No, nothing like that. No. I've never tried to like read or write on it. Have you ever tried to do, uh, you know, a Sudoku on acid or something like that? <laughs> no, not really. Timmy was pretty chilled out for somebody who was about to receive a dose of K that could feed a whole freshers party. Hi, George. How are you? I'm fine. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm good. Preparing for the, uh, yeah, for the study? Roughly at the end of the infusion, each patient will get around 0.68 milligrams per kilo of their weight. How much recreational ketamine would you have to do to achieve a similar effect that Timmy will be feeling in the few minutes? I wouldn't compare it to any other views. I would discourage completely. Of course. Looking at the drink itself, how pleasant does that look right now? Four. Four? If you just follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. Oh, no sort of hands. So what's happening in, in Timmy's mind when this infusion is taking place? Before we've given Timmy his uh, ketamine infusion, we showed him some pretty typical trigger images of alcohol. Normally, his brain would be restabilizing uh, those memories uh, so that they could persist. But the ketamine should be stopping that happening. So we're hoping over the next half an hour, those memories won't be able to restabilize and should be weakened. Okay, Timmy, happy? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so starting now. Can you feel it, Timmy, or...? I didn't think so. Not, not yet. Yeah, I can feel... I can feel it coming on, I think. I feel something happening. It feels good. It's like, um... It can kind of seem like everything's just a... a 2D sheet that somehow, like, intersects your intersects your skull. <laughs> it's been 10 minutes now, uh, which means we've got some questionnaires for you to complete. Do you feel like you could do them? Yeah, yeah, yeah? I can do okay. it, yeah. So if you need any help, just let me know. At this moment in time, do you see things as if you're in a tunnel looking through a wide angle photographic lens? <laughs> it's like it suggests it and it makes me think it. But then maybe I just didn't notice before. Do you have some experience that separates you from what is happening? For instance, do you feel as if you're in a movie or play as if you're as if you're a robot? Slightly. Where are you off to now, Timmy? The inner landscape is void. It's just wide open. I can't really see anything as such. It's like, it's this like strange thing of feeling in your body, but not in your body at the same time. It's not how it normally feels. And of fusion. Okay, so mm. your infusion's ended now, Timmy. It's been half an hour, um, so no more drug will be going in. Mm. Okay, yeah, how are, you, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Yeah. I could do with a cigarette as well. So Timmy's ketamine infusion has now ceased. Um, he's been taken off the drip. Um, and now I think we're all done.
Two months on, we were back in Canterbury to meet Timmy and see if he really had kept off the booze. I couldn't work out from Timmy's friends whether he'd changed for the better or if he'd even changed at all. Do you think it's affected his social life in a positive or negative way? Um, I recently had a party at mine and obviously he wasn't having any alcohol and I gave him some iced tea, so um, he seemed okay. Is it something you'd ever consider? If I felt my drinking got out of control, yeah, I would consider it, absolutely. But it doesn't, it doesn't kind of scare you in a way that... No, it scares the hell out of me. But uh, becoming an alcoholic, I have a daughter, I wouldn't want to do that around her either. Do you think it's worked? I reckon that if he has a strong desire to drink, there is no power in the world that can stop him. Timmy didn't turn down a pint, and I assumed he was back on it. But it wasn't as simple as that. So when was the last time you had a drink before this one? I actually had one last night. Oh. I drank three cans. Thank you very much. Here's your first beer. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Drink it. I don't want it. It's drink fine. it! It's fucking flat. I actually had a drink a week before that as well. I was like anxious about it. I was actually like, I don't know whether I want to drink this at all, even though I've been looking forward to it all day. So how much exactly have you drunk in the last two months? If you exclude last night, I've literally had four glasses of wine. In 60 days, more or less? Yeah. That's quite the stretch. Yeah. I think that it was to do with like a shock. Like they told me that I had to not drink a beer and the first time, they made me drink the beer. And I'm like, how could that one little thing, <laughs> like, and then a shitload of gay, have that much of an effect? I mean, I still enjoy it for what it is. Before it was just like a, a staple. It was as close to normal to drink a beer as it would be to drink a glass of water when you're thirsty, you know? The, the ketamine was the thing that probably uh, pushed me to do it by creating the aversion and stuff like this, but then it took conscious willpower on my part. The experiment seems to have worked. Timmy's gone from necking beer like it's orange juice to less than one drink a week. It will be months before the researchers find out if it's worked for everyone else too. But if it has, it could change the way we treat addictive behaviours forever. I get the feeling Timmy always thought his life would be transformed by drugs. Just not like this. <laughs>